Oh my goodness, man, the knocking on the wood, it didn't work. Ay, 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 I just made a video yesterday talking about Brock Besser, and I was like, yeah, it sucks that he's out for four weeks or whatever the heck it is, and now it's like, okay, we have even more terrible news. Maybe it's not that bad. Okay, maybe not. But when it comes to the update on the guy that we also talked about yesterday, Ilya Mikheyev, I said yesterday, man, oh, it's only day-to-day, -day, the injury that he sustained, wherein he got hit into the boards weirdly and he fell on his, like, arm or whatever it was in the Calgary game. It's fine. Day-to-day -day is okay because it's like, okay, it's the very bare minimum of injury status that you can execute for a player, right? But, like, no, it's even worse for Mikheyev now, too. We had ourselves an interview done with Bruce Boudreaux, and this is the status update on the players at bay. Besser, he may skate with the group soon, which is actually something that we talked about yesterday. Even though his wrist may have had surgery, it was operated on, he needs to recover, etc., etc. Your wrist doesn't really help you when you skate. So Besser may indeed go out there and skate with the group soon. Mikheyev is now week to week with a lower body injury. So the arm that he fell on when he took that awkward hit two days ago, yeah, apparently that's not necessarily it. It might have something to do with his lower body instead. And if you're anything like me, you're kind of worrying now because wait a minute, isn't Ilya Mikheyev's entire bread and butter his speed? It's his mobility. It's his ability to fly down the ice and spread his wings because that's what he's been doing the past few years and even in the preseason game against Calgary. But no, he is now week to week instead of day to day. So, um, yeah, he's going to be out for a while. He's not good this week. They'll check up on him again next week. And if he says, no, I'm still not good, then they'll check him up again the week after. So this could be a week to week to week to week to week kind of thing because Vancouver Canucks luck has it that anybody who is on a week to week injury ends up becoming out for the next two months. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a bad pattern. This is why I said I was anxious at the beginning of the season. Not necessarily because I was worried for this specific scenario, but just... All the expectations, you know? Boudreaux saying it would have been a disaster if the team doesn't make the playoffs. Demko pretty much guaranteeing that the team would make the playoffs. And for me, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm a Vancouver Canucks fan. I've watched this team the past few years. They always seem to have a big injury or two, let alone three. But uh, yeah, let's continue on with Bruce Boudreaux and his update. Myers was sick today. He has himself a non-corona illness, so... Yeah, I mean, you had games back in the day where Henrik Sedin played with a very bad fever, even though he was very clearly not able to play because he wanted to keep the Ironman streak up, but he was still able to go out there and do it. Who knows what the NHL's rule is for players going out there and playing hockey games while sick with something that is not the corona, but... Tyler Myers being out is not the best news to receive. And then you also have yourselves Travis Dermott, who had left practice early today as a precaution after taking a hit. If we go worst case scenario mode over here and we say, hey, the Vancouver Canucks are going to start out their season without Myers. Let's say he stick for the next few weeks. It's probably not like that, but let's just assume no Myers, no Dermott. What does the Vancouver Canucks decor look like then? You have OEL Hughes, and then I guess you have Rathbone and Shen? And then like Burroughs and Pullman? Like, oh boy, I'm sorry. The Canucks decor is pretty deep, to be honest. Like, there are names that can fill up spots in the lineup, but like, just how good that decor is, man. OEL Hughes, Rathbone, Shen, and Burroughs, Pullman. That is not a good decor. It's kind of wild that it's like this after only two guys are sidelined, Myers and Dermot. So, yeah, the Vancouver Canucks, it kind of got worse. And, uh, you know, I don't think I did my job properly doing the knocking on the wood in the best way that we could have because I said it yesterday. We didn't knock on wood for Besser. He got taken out. Now we didn't knock on wood for McKay. I've knocked being week to week. Now he's out. What's next, dude? Tyler Myers and Travis Dermot are going to be out for... 
maybe just a little bit. I don't want to get my hopes up at all with Travis Dermott because after the game against Calgary where they said, oh, it's a precaution where they're getting Mikheyev out of the game because he had himself a little bit of a fall, etc., etc., but then it became a week-to-week thing after being just a day-to-day thing. How many times has this happened with the Vancouver Canucks where they get a new player and that new player is not able to play for them for a while because they've been out the entire time? Like, I feel like that's a pattern that we've seen before. Am I wrong? I don't know. And just how Vancouver Canucks is it in general to miss out, or to lose out, excuse me, on a legit top six forward in Brock, another guy that's probably supposed to be a top six forward on this team in Mikheyev, and you have a top four Dean Myers and potentially somebody else in the top four, like Travis Dermott. I know he might not necessarily be a top four D-man, but you get what I mean. This team and its depth, it's going to be tested really, really strongly to kick off the 2022-2023 season, assuming Tyler Myers takes a while to recover and that Dermott is actually out too. I don't like this, man. I don't like this. Just for fun as well, I wanted to go out there and talk about the new lines because... You know, with an injury to two of your top six forwards, it probably opens the door up for somebody else to show up and take a job or two. These are the Canucks lines from today during the practice. Pearson, Miller, Garland. So, with Brock out, they moved Garland up to the first line. They have Horvat, Podkolzin, and Curtis Lazar. Oh my goodness. Ay, 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 ay. Curtis Lazar being a top six forward, playing with Bo in the wing. That's something, isn't it? Kuzmenko and Carlson are swapping out between Pedersen and Hoaglander, so there is a very slight line for an all-Swedish third line. Unless, of course, you take out Carlson full-time and you slot in Kuzmenko, which is likely going to be the case because Linus Carlson is not going to make the team. And then you have Dakota Joshua with Dickinson and DiGiuseppe and Amon swapping out in that last right-wing spot. Dude, this team ends up losing out Mikheyev and Besser. Their replacements in the lineup are... Did Giuseppe and Hoaglander? Man, I like Niels, but Amon? This team does not really have too much depth, I feel. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they were one or two injuries away from looking like an absolute fragile assortment of guys that are scrambled around now to the point where you have Curtis Lazar playing in your top six. For your decor, you have OEL Hughes, DeKaiser Pullman, Dermot Burrows, who actually had to leave, so, yeah, let's just exclude Dermot for now. And then Rathbone and Shen. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. uh, You might have to go out there and rely on Danny DeKaiser a little bit more. And I don't know if I really want to do that. As I said the entire time, I did watch a lot of Detroit last year, and uh, DeKaiser was not great. So, yeah. He went from playing with Moritz Sider to playing with Tyler Myers, and you can definitely see the impact in terms of how good of a transition he was able to be because of it. But either way, talk to the comments on your thoughts about the Vancouver Canucks and uh, this weird assortment of injuries that seems to have been plaguing the team. Hopefully for guys like Myers and Dermott, it is only a short-term thing, and they're not going to be out for an extended amount of time, but I don't know what I can believe anymore, because, I mean, Ilya Mikheyev was supposed to be a precaution, And then that became day-to-day, and now that's week-to-week, Besser's out for four weeks, it's Canucks hockey all over again, and the season hasn't even begun yet. I can't say I'm surprised, though, like, to be truthfully honest. Talk in the comments, though, either way, all your thoughts about the Canucks and their new lines and the injuries and everything. It sucks, but what do you gotta do? It's Canucks hockey, baby, 2022-2023. Let's go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.